Rainmaker was part of the first four albums released all together to launch the label. And it was, I'd made the record, it had been lying around for nine months because they wanted the Pink Floyd to have one of the first records and they got so stoned they couldn't finish it. So it took, it took them nine months and they still never delivered it on time. So, and I was sitting there saying, I've made a record, you lying bastard, I've never seen it, you know. <laughs> what can you do? So it was a very frustrating time knowing that I'd made a record and it, but it was not around. <laughs> Malcolm Jones was running it, as I do believe, but it was still the board was still retired colonels and pe you know people with their fingers firmly up their asses, and I couldn't get on with that at all. You know. And it, they, was, it was they were supposed to give Malcolm carte blanche to run this hippie label, but they wouldn't, or, or, or at least that's what it seemed to me. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Uh, Mick Ronson was the guy who lived around the corner and, and, and from me in Hull, and he was in a band called the Rats, who were truly awful. Apart from the fact that Mick had star written all over him and he played like a hero. You know. he, I took him down to London to do Survivor, which introduced him to Gus, who introduced him to David, and the rest is history. You know. But I asked, asked Mick to join the, the band that I put together after I'd done Survivor, and he said, no, no. No, I'm, I'm not leaving, lads. <laughs> and then David turned up and took the whole kit and caboodle, you know. Sack the thing, it turned him into a roadie and turned the, the rats into the spiders from Mars, and I still thought they were awful. <laughs> Apart from Mick, you know, I've never been a Bowie fan really. Um, working with Gus Ludgeon was never dull, let's put it that way. Um, I remember he, he, Gus had a penchant for expensive studios. Uh, the Survivor album cost a hundred, not the Survivor, the Rainmaker album cost £125 until I wrote that song it didn't work out and that cost 1200 quid in Trident and he wanted to be in Trident because it was proud of itself as being the most expensive studio this side of the Atlantic. When we did Wrecked again he had to move into Air because that was the most expensive studio this side. <laughs> Which is why that record never made a bean, you know. I've, when, when Wrecked Again came out, I went to AMI and said, look, what, what, what are you doing for a promotion? They said, we're not doing anything. Gus has spent all the money on the London Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> well, thanks, Gus. It's my money. <laughs> we were both signed to Essex Music at the time, and I'd gone in to, borrow, to try and get like 300 quid to keep my band on the road. And I think David was going for, asking for 30 grand to keep his band on the road. And I'm, I'm leaving as David's coming in, he comes in, he says, hello Michael, how are you doing? I said, I'm good David, it's fine. He says, what are you doing? I says, I'm going to go out and get some lunch. He says, dressed like that? 